Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Joni Young and I'm going to show you all today how to paint this fun, whimsical pumpkin house landscape. We're working on an 8x10 double primed and stretched canvas. I purchased it primed already and I'll, the only thing I'm going to do to prep this canvas is get it a little bit wet to start. So I'm just going to use some water and just water down the canvas a little. By doing this, it's really going to help me spread my paint around easier. So it can be a little bit tricky sometimes with acrylic. And quite often beginners think that they need to get more paint on their brush, but really it's about having a, a slick surface to begin. There's other things you can use to prep your canvas if you want. You can get by medium, but I find water just works uh, well enough for me. So you don't wanna use too much water and you don't wanna to wait too long either before applying the paint because it's gonna dry quickly. So I'm gonna be applying the paint with a number 16 uh, filbert brush. And I'm gonna start with my light blue violet. I'll have a full list of all the colors I'm using today below the video in the description box. So just light blue violet, I'm gonna pull across the top of the canvas, back and forth. And see how easily it spreads. You don't have to be too neat and tidy with this step because we're going to add some clouds and we're going to cover up a lot of this with our little pumpkin houses. So every year, fall Halloween season, I love to add a new pumpkin tutorial um, to my channel here in my playlist. And I did a pumpkin house that was really popular. I'll leave a link below for that one if you're new to my channel and you haven't seen it really really fun and charming and so I thought this year I would have like two or three pumpkin little houses kind of all together and go right down to the bottom take a little bit more water here to help blend that out okay the next thing I'm going to do is take some white paint Zinc White by Golden Acrylics. You can use any white that you want. And Zinc White compared to Titanium White is a lot more transparent. So you'll get a softer look than the Titanium White, which can be nice, but it can also be a little bit frustrating if you're really wanting some bright highlights. Um, I just want this to look kind of soft and blurry in the background. I just got a really nice texture, this zinc white by Golden Acrylics. Okay, the next color I'm gonna add is some green over top of the blue down here on the bottom. We'll just add a little bit of a grassy area here. And this light olive green overlaps nicely over top of the blue. And somewhere here, we're gonna have a little path leading up to our pumpkin houses, but we'll worry about that later on. Okay, I'm gonna wash my brush out completely. I'm gonna continue using this one. Um, I might go down a couple sizes uh, for the details and I may be using a little liner, a little brown brush, but don't worry, I'm gonna show you all the, the brushes I'm using and explain them and tell you the sizes uh, as I add them during this video. So after drying my brush off and cleaning it, I'm gonna take some brown or burnt sienna. You can use, I like the burnt sienna because it's warmer and it's gonna um, be a nice base for the pumpkin with the light yellow warm, neon yellow warm and neon orange. Okay, so I'm gonna start the first main pumpkin kind of off centered here, half circle shapes. Okay, I'm just gonna pull, pull, pull. Start getting that shape 
and the lines down the pattern of the pumpkins. Make it a little bit darker down here. Add a little bit of green down here over top of the brown. Doesn't change it too much, but we want this to be, if it's down here, to give it that round 3D look. It's going to be a little bit darker and in shadow down there. Now, I thought it would be cool to kind of have them uh, stacked and kind of lopsided. So I'm going to add another one right here. It's going to be smaller. Again, more brown. Okay, so there's another one. You can make different shapes for your pumpkins. You can make more oval ones if you want. And then we'll have another one right here. So maybe this one will be a little bit more kind of oblong. And we'll have our stem kind of swirly right there, another one right in there, and another one right like that. We'll add more details as we go along, but this is a good, pretty good start. So I'm going to come in front here and have that one kind of maybe leaning and stacked up on the other side. I'll decide more as I build up my highlights. Maybe we'll have a path down here. So just with the same paint that's in my brush, a little bit of that burnt sienna, I'm just going to pull back and forth, side to side. Longer sweeps and lines here for the foreground. And then they can get a little bit shorter. Let's get around here and we'll have a little door there. But I'm going to dry this off and then come in with uh, our highlights and build up to our beautiful shades of orange and warm yellows. So I'll take my hair dryer and do that right now. So we are ready for the next step. I'm going to go down um, to a number six filbert brush. Okay, so the next color I'm going to be adding is my neon orange. No water on my brush at all. And I think I'll start up here. So we're just going to go over top of the brown. And that brown's going to give us some nice shadows that we can build up to our brightest areas with. So we're just going to think about those lines. Just think about what those patterns look like in the lines on pumpkins. To me, they look like either bananas, a bunch of bananas, or crescent moons. It might sound silly, but trust me, when you break it down into simple little shapes, um, it really simplifies it for you. It makes it a lot easier. And then in here. So the one in the front will look more like this. So it comes a little bit wider here and then gets narrower and narrower down there. I love the fall season, autumn, Halloween, and it's so much fun now that I've got a grandson. So the kids are all grown up and you know, it's a really nice part of celebrating the seasons when you've got little ones. And it's always kind of sad when they grew up and we weren't going trick or treating or making Halloween and fall crafts and all that stuff. So now that I've got a grandson, it's fun again. We can decorate and do all those crafts and 
start teaching him how to paint, of course. He just loves doing ev everything and anything. He has such a happy spirit and so excited by everything. Um, I'm going to take the light neon yellow warm. The neons I'm using, neon um, red, orange, and yellow are all by Holbein. I'll have a link down below for those if you want to check them out. You don't need neon paints to paint this today. Just use any yellow orange that you have. I'm just going to go over now. Those little banana crescent moon shapes. It'll all dry a little bit darker, so I'm even going to add a little bit of white afterwards. I haven't added any water to my brush at all. So we've got the Two temperatures, the cool orange, this neon yellow is a, or neon um, orange, this one here is cool. And then by taking the warm yellow and adding that over top, we're creating a warm orange and it ends up just working out so nicely to have those different um, temperatures of warm and cool. A lot of people don't know that that's what makes paintings pop. Not only complementary colors do, but warm and cool shadows and highlights. All right, so before this can dry, I'll take a little bit of that zinc white. And where it pops out, you know, is where we're going to have it be the lightest, where the light's going to hit it. Because this is so transparent, this um, white, you can even just like soften your whole pumpkin if you wanted. If you want more of like a shabby sort of vintage soft type of painting, you know, like less contrast and just kind of soften everything, um, then I would recommend just going over the whole thing with it and you'll see it'll dry to a nice pastel shade. I'm just gonna go sneak right over here. Okay. And I'll add a little bit more right in here. And then this path down here, I'm gonna mix that warm yellow, white, and burnt sienna. And just slide my brush back and forth. A little bit more white. And just turn my brush this way. That way I can reach down there a little bit better. And I think you all can, can see a little bit better by me doing that too. And you can hear me just rinsing my brush out. So I'm going to work on these stems a little bit. Now, I really love twisted, scrolly, um, braided looking stems and exaggerating it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with a liner brush. Um, got, it's hard to see the numbers on here because they've either got paint on them. Oh, it's number one. Number one liner. You can use a round brush too if it comes to a nice little point like this. And I'm going to take my green and my burnt sienna. I'm gonna steady my, my pinky there, come around the edge, and then I'm gonna start twisting. So we're at that 
a curly look, a little bit of sync with the green. From here, twist up, down, and around, up, down, and around. Or you can come around from the other side. Whatever's the easiest. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit more of my burnt sienna, a little bit of my blue turquoise, and I'm going to add a little bit more shadows here. Twist down and around. And we'll start working on the next ones. But I also want to add a little bit of a shadow down here. Just here kind of at the base where we're having our path and we'll have our little door. We need some shadows down here, right? Okay, just keep pulling back and forth to blend it out. And then we'll add our stem. This one's going to be smaller. Pull and twist, twist, twist. And we'll do this one up here as well. And then we can even add a little bit more lines in here just at the top to give it a little bit more definition. And from the, the base. Well, I'm having so much fun with this already. I hope you guys are enjoying this. Feel free to paint along with me. That's what my videos are for. You guys can stop and pause at any time. Share it with your painting groups, your friends, your family. And just enjoy the seasons and have fun painting it your own style too. You don't have to feel like... Um, I'm just going to switch over to my smaller filbert brush here. Don't feel like you need to make it look exactly like mine or you failed because it's really hard. It's like trying to copy somebody's um, handwriting. You know, you just can't. We all have our own style. So you can paint what I'm painting, but it's going to naturally come out the way it's supposed to for you in your own style, how you see it. And that's what the interesting part of it is. I love to see that. So feel free to share it on our, our Facebook group a little bit more of my um, light olive green and we'll just pull that over top so we get a nice transition it's a little bit softer of a shadow okay well I think this little pumpkin house or pumpkin houses need some cute little round doors. So I'm going to take, I think this is a good color combination, the burnt sienna and that turquoise. So I'm going to go ahead and, and use that. And I'm seeing a little fat door like right about here, maybe comes narrower down here, a little wider at the top. And then maybe we'll add one uh, right about here, even though the pumpkin is slanted on its side. We'll turn, make sure the door is straight up and down. We'll add another little one right there. And then we can add some little windows. I think we'll have a little peak coming out here, a little roof line.
a little window there. A shadow under there and maybe some pretty turquoise shutters so we'll do a little slant this way and that way same on the other side slant there slant there join them and paint them blue whatever color you want I've got blue turquoise I'm gonna take a little bit of white You can add a few little lines in there if you want. Definitely use a smaller brush, whatever you feel comfortable with. Add a little bit of trim on the top and the bottom. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of blue turquoise to the roof there. And then a little bit of white. We can make it look like little shingles even just by tapping or just pulling like that. A few different ways of, of adding it. And then a little bit of white blue turquoise again. This needs to dry just a little bit. We can have a few steps. Add a shadow with in between the stairs with burnt sienna. Just need to straighten that out just a little bit. A little bit slanted. It is a, a whimsical painting, so you you could have it kind of slanted if you wanted, but I think I'll straighten mine out a little bit more. And I'm just gonna take off a little bit of the paint inside here. leaving it outlined dark and then we can have some light. We'll take a little bit of white and the neon yellow warm. I'm just going to go around the door right here. I'm going to switch over to a smaller brush. I'm going to go over to my liner brush here. Take that turquoise burnt sienna mixture again. Straighten that out. Just go over these lines, these little shutters here. And I'll add a line in the center and then two across. And then I'll add a little line down there and across. I'm going to add a little vine here. So burnt sienna, there's a little bit of blue turquoise in there as well. And my green could have a few little curly vines like that. I'm 
add a little bit more light inside here. And maybe just a few little dabs in the window. A little bit in there. Take a little bit more of that white with the blue turquoise. Just add some little lines here, even though they're not perfect. It's just about creating a fun, whimsical painting. Not perfect lines, but we know that those are the shutters. And then I'm going to add just with the still using the white and the turquoise. And start to add some more um, windows. Maybe we've got a little one here, a little one there, kind of slanted. Have fun with adding your little windows and indoor shapes. They don't have to be perfect. Right? If they're a little bit lopsided and slanted, it just makes it even have more character. I'm just gonna add a little shadow underneath there. Just with a little bit of that, a little bit of that blue and turquoise. And I'll add some shutters. Remember this one's smaller, so we're going to paint everything smaller. We're not going to bother with those little lines. A little bit of white. Instead of adding all those little lines for the shutters, I'm just going to go right through with the white. That's going to dry darker, so I'm being a little bit more generous. same colors, the green and burnt sienna, and just add a little grid for the window, just a little cross. Now, we could make this a little door. I feel like I want it to be a little door, so I'm going to change it. And that happens quite often when I'm painting. And I'm just kind of making things up on the spot. So I'm going to come down here. Take that burnt sienna, a little bit of water on my brush. Actually burnt sienna mixed with a little bit of that turquoise blue. Okay, then I'm going to take orange and white, maybe a little bit of burnt sienna in there. 
mix it all up. And then we can start pulling some lines down here. A little bit more white to add to the stairs so they show up a little bit better. And then we'll add a little handle on the door right there. A little bit of white. Dab. Dab. You can barely see it. A little bit more burnt sienna. It all depends on how much you want your lines in your door to stand out if you make the lines if you make more contrast right it's going to stand out a little bit more i'll just take this down a little bit and move it over there so the stairs are coming out on the path more towards the path I think we could start adding some stairs kind of wrapping around. Let's see what we can do. We'll make something, we'll just make up something fun. So I'm going to use a really small flat brush for my stairs. I've got a number four here and I'll start with my blue turquoise and burnt sienna. We've got a nice dark, dark base. And I think right about here would be a good spot to have some stairs, a little line. And then I'll take a little bit of green, my light olive green, right here, put a bit on the tip of my brush, gently add that to the top of each step. Make sure you're not pushing too hard. So always take the time to reload the end of your brush. I'm going to add a little bit of flowers and vines and stuff coming down from the window. I think that would look pretty on all of them. So I'll just take a little bit of blue turquoise and the light olive green. So charming, right? To have those little window boxes that add so much character. I have a little window box right here. Let's take my burnt sienna. Then See how much paint I've got on my brush? It's pretty thick. Dab, dab, dab. Okay, washing that off, I'm gonna take some red and we'll dab a little bit of that on there. Maybe we've got some cute little flowers, little roses, begonias. Anything you want it to be. That's your little fairy tale pumpkin house. Okay, and I think this railing or this staircase needs a railing, doesn't it? So I'm going to just use this brush, the same brush, same colors, the dark with burnt sienna, blue turquoise. 
and come around right about here. Can barely see those ones. It should get a little bit smaller and kind of fade it away here. But see for how it's coming around, you want to come in the front here and then have those railing posts cut in front of those stairs and over top of those stairs. I'm going to take a little bit of this off. And then we're going to take light green. And it really helps if you can, if your painting's dry there, just steady your, your pinky. And I'm going to add a little bit. Dab, dab, dab. make that show up a little bit better. I think that we should have a little something on this side too. So this is going to come above the stairs. So you're going to start the railing here halfway across your stairs. I know that it feels scary. And then we're going to have it come over top of the pumpkin. Right, and we Sometimes when we're just beginning, we don't really know where to add those lines for our railings. But with practice, you'll get there, you guys. And just follow along with me step by step. If you have any questions at all, I'm happy to help. And you can, can connect with me one-on-one -on, -one on Patreon if you want um, me to critique a painting of yours or or help you out with something that may be a little bit more in depth. Okay. Gosh, I love painting and being able to share it with you guys. I don't know where I would be if I didn't have uh, this outlet and this wonderful hobby. That's why it's so important to have YouTube and have these platforms um, so that more and more of you out there can see it and join in and be happier because art makes us happy, doesn't it? Okay, so I'm going to start another little staircase here. And this one is just going to go behind somewhere behind that pumpkin. So I just want to have the indication of something else under there. I want to have another step right down here at the bottom. Okay, I'm washing my brush off each time I switch from highlights to, or from like the base color to my highlights. So I'm going to be adding the same green line in between those stairs. I think that it's cool to have like moss covered steps. Now I'm going to just take a little bit of that zinc white and mix that up with some light olive green. Got a little bit of those darker colors coming out, but that's okay. As long as you've got enough white in there. And you want to work it out of your brush and have it just on the tip like this. So I know this is going to dry a little bit darker. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of a highlight here so it stands out. Your highlight there. And we'll add just a little. All I have to do is just gently tap here for these ones. Maybe a little bit more green in here. I 
kind of just work the rest out on the front. And we'll add a little railing. We'll go back to our first dark colors. And there's a little bit of trick here to sneak in there. We'll just do one side. It's far away anyway, so just take a little bit of a light green now. Have it twisting and wrapping around there. Take a little bit of this off right here, so it's a bit more faded. And you know, I'm gonna take a little bit of let's take a little bit of that neon orange and white and add that inside our doorway. I'm gonna leave this one without a whoops, and leave this without a door. Just have it open like that. A little bit more of my turquoise and burnt sienna. And just go over that area there again. And a little bit of a shadow there. Hope you guys are having fun with this. I sure am. Switching over to my liner brush now with a little bit of white and turquoise. I'm gonna add little lines inside this arch. Kind of just little dabs like this. Maybe a little bit more white there. Sure notice a big, big difference between the, this white, this zinc white, and the titanium white that I normally use. I need a lot more of this. Okay, I'm going to take a bit more white. Add some light. Make these areas pop out a little bit more. This is the neon yellow worm I'm using. It's luminous yellow. And I'll take some white along with that. And I'll add just, just a few more highlights here. Think of the widest parts of the pumpkin that stick out the most. That's where you're going to see most of those highlights, the most highlights. And I'm going to take a little dab, add that inside, warm that light up in there, and we'll sneak a little bit inside this window, that window, you can barely see any light in there. Let me just add a little bit more. So just with a little blob on the end of my brush, you can do four little taps like that to sneak inside the, the window frame and the grid. And let's not forget this one. I'll just do two. Kind of big blobs bigger than i meant but it still looks cute and then i'm going to come inside and add some brighter brighter lines on the door okay i think we need to start adding some little bushes and flowers down here at the base so i'm going to be using um one of my mop brushes and I've got a little angle mop brush um, I've been getting a lot of questions about these brushes these are makeup brushes so um, I'm not sure if you can find them at the art store I've never seen them like this but um, they're awesome they're cheap and this brand is called Beaky 
BK Beaky. So I got a whole set of these on Amazon. And I'm just going to start making a dark base here. I'm going to take blue turquoise, olive green, burnt sienna, and I'm going to add some cute little bushes here. I'll take more of that olive green and start adding a few little highlights here. And then just a gentle little sweep. Sweep. There's just a little bit too much in there. I'm going to my brush up and just gently push off a little bit of that. Okay, with another brush, I'm going to add, oh, I've got this beautiful Neon Rose by the same brand, Holbein, and I'm going to start adding just little dabs for flowers. No water at all, just straight, full-on paint. I'm going to make the dabs bigger here so it feels more like foreground. Add a few back in here as well. And then bigger here again. Take a little bit of white. I like to just kind of swirl it and then add little dabs or half circles. This color is just so pretty. One of my absolute favorites. Now we got this red too. We could add a little bit of red in here as well in between. It's going to dry a lot darker because it's a transparent, it's not very opaque. The neons are not opaque. So that's why I add a little bit of white to them. Yeah, I want to add a little bit of this. Neon yellow warm. I think that would look pretty. A little bit of white. What a fun little whimsical garden and pumpkin house. This has been so much fun to get to share with you guys. Thank you so much for joining me today for this one. And to see more, a little, of my, a little bit of my pumpkin houses. And if you want to paint along, have a look through the playlist. Until next time, have a wonderful day and happy painting. I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.